All right. Well, welcome everyone to today's uh, online workshop from Learn WordPress. Um, I am your host, Courtney, uh, and today I have Rich Tabor with me today, um, and we're doing the next in a series that we are doing on Learn WordPress about the creative side of blocks. Um, this started with the, the series kicked off with Brian Gardner, who I see is with us today as well um, in the chat. So hello. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, so again, welcome. Um, as you join, as folks join, feel free to answer in the chat. I see folks are already doing this. Um, where are you from? Where are you coming, uh, calling in from today? Calling? Zooming in from today? Um, what do you do with WordPress? Uh, and on the creative side, is there an artist that inspires you you'd like to share with us? We have uh, Artur from Germany, Brian from Chicago, uh, me, I am in the US, I'm in um, the state of Hawaii, so it is in the morning for me right now, so I know for lots of folks, um, we have like mainland US, uh, yeah, East Coast, Stephanie from Kentucky, welcome. Right, just let a few more folks in. And so if you haven't attended one of these online workshops before, um, this is a space where we learn together. So you can ask questions in the chat at any time and we will answer them as they come up. Um, and if you know the answer to someone's question or have anything to add to the conversation, feel free to contribute live in the chat. Um, so again, we're here to learn together. We don't claim to know all the answers, but we can help find them. Uh, this and other online workshops, uh, we record and upload to wordpress.tv. Uh, so you'll be able to refer to this later if you ever want to follow along with uh, what is demonstrated today. Um, and finally, I'd like to add that online workshops like these are hosted by folks that enjoy WordPress and giving back to the community. So a lot of us are volunteers. A lot of us are sponsored to do this volunteer work, like myself. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you're interested in hosting something like this, or if you have a topic that you're really interested in that um, you'd like to see become a workshop, please get in touch. Um, all right, so in today's workshop, what we're, we'll be talking about today is the Museum of Block Art, um, and then where we have lots of uh, great pieces of art created purely from blocks. Um, and then Rich here will do a demo of a piece of block art, uh, a new piece that you do, will not see in the museum yet. Um, and then quickly, uh, we'll go over how to submit a piece of art to the museum. Everyone is welcome to submit a piece of art. So hopefully today's demo will inspire you to also create your own piece of art and submit it to the museum. That said, what we won't be covering today is setting up WordPress site or any support with WordPress site issues. Um, I know a lot of folks come to these workshops to also do some troubleshooting on their own sites, um, but today is purely a, a demonstration and some sharing of, of a creative process. All right, so we've been talking about the Museum of Block Art. If you haven't seen it before, this uh, museum lives at block-museum.com. And so the Museum of Block Art is this virtual block art museum, and it features artists such as Rich, such as Brian, uh, um, around the WordPress community. So all, sort of, all sorts of folks uh, contribute to this. And I'd like to just quickly show you what that looks like. Um, just give me a moment. Too many windows on my screen. <laughs> All right, so um, this is the the museum. So just um, this came to be around like WordPress 5.8, 5.9. Is that correct, Rich? Um, yeah, I think so. When it when it launched, yeah. So when um, 
when this happened, folks um, came up with this idea to create this museum. Um, and so, yeah, you visit block-museum.com. Uh, you can enter the museum here, um, browse the collections. And there is this new feature, new interactive tour that uh, if you haven't visited the museum in a while or if you're new to it, uh, is a interactive tour. So I love this interactive exhibit. Uh, it's kind of like more of a choose your own adventure way of exploring the museum. Um, so it's like this narrative that takes you through the entire museum. So I won't go through it completely right now, but just to give you a taste of it. Um, so it tells the story of you entering the museum and you just click to take yourself through it. Um, so it's a, it's a really cool way to experience the museum. The way that folks were seeing it before was just um, viewing the, the index, which is also a nice way to see everything at a glance. Um, so yeah, here is all the pieces of art in the museum. Everything you see here was created with blocks and WordPress. So um, I find this really cool and amazing and inspiring. And I hope this inspires you all too. All right. Um, if we have some time later, uh, maybe we'll go through a little bit more of the interactive exhibit. So I find it a really cool way to experience the museum. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we have Rich Tabor with us today. Um, he's the head of product at Extendify and a contributor to the core design, meta, photo, plugins, test, and themes teams. Thank you so much for your contributions, Rich. Um, and he's also a block artist, which is what brings him here today. Uh, he has a few pieces in the Block Museum already. Um, I have taken a screenshot of of them here. Uh, they kind of look really nice next to each other here. So um, this is what he's contributed to the museum so far. And um, again, all created with blocks and WordPress. And today he'll be showing us this piece that he calls balance. Um, and this is not in the block museum yet. So you're getting a exclusive look at that. <laughs> uh, so I'll hand it over to, to Rich. Stop my screen share. Yeah, thanks, Courtney. All right. Yeah, so um, I actually wanted to um, ask you if do you have any background behind this work and anything that in inspired you. Uh, I, I really like uh, geometric shapes, like simplicity in design, and uh, the challenge that I kind of present myself with this particular piece, and, and some of my other ones are along the same vein, but was. Uh, I kind of create something out of just one kind of block, like just one of something. Um, so I started with um, the group block is really flexible. So like, how do I kind of flex the group block in a bunch of different ways to come up with some interesting uh, concepts? And this is one of those approaches. And, uh, and I thought this would be a good one to lean in on um, from, as a teachable moment, uh, just to kind of flex the new design tooling that landed in 6.1. Uh, so starting with, a simple group block type type flow and then we'll dive into how uh, style variations kind of affect the way it looks and then also kind of tailor the the gradient style to get that kind of balance sort of look to it um that's that's kind of the approach i've taken uh, with this one here all right let me share my screen yeah uh, you can see my screen here yes Sweet. So I just have a um, 2023 loaded up here, and uh, I do have the Gutenberg plugin activated just to get a few extra little bits uh, that are coming uh, in the next version of WordPress. Uh, but I'll, I'll just build this in the site editor uh, just so it's uh, front and center here. So I'm just going to hit edit site. And uh, this is, if you're, if you're not super familiar with, the, with all the latest full site editing efforts um, uh, that, that are now classified as the site editor, uh, so where you can modify your header that's uh, persistent across the entire site. Uh, uh, any any blocks, like right now I'm on the home page, so I can modify anything on my home and you can also add footers and whatnot. But um, but I'm doing it here so that I could leverage all the global styles pieces uh, for this uh, particular piece of art. So I'm going to start in this group block here and I'm just going to add another group block. 
this is an experimental uh, control here where you can you can pick whether or not you want a, a row or a stack, but I'm just going to go with the standard uh, group here. And let's see, let's start. I'm just going to start by picking alternating colors. Maybe I'll start with the green that comes within 2023 out of the box. And then there's these new padding controls. So I'm going to add some padding here. I'm just, you can go all the way up or all the way down. And the theme can pick what these values are. And you can even kind of customize this your own uh, with any type of units or even split it apart and do the different paddings on different sides. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna do, uh, I'm gonna set it to one here. And then I'm gonna duplicate this block. I use the keyboard shortcut for uh, this, it was the command shift D, uh, but you can duplicate it here as well. I'll just do grab a couple. And I'm gonna pick this one up and drop it inside of this one and then pick a different color. And I'm going to repeat this process a number of times just to get this cool geometric look here. And I'm going to keep alternating colors. And I'm hitting again Command Shift D to duplicate. And already we're starting to see this like kind of trippy uh, design coming through. Again, just using the presets here. I'm going to do this. I don't know. Maybe a few more times here. And a lot of the, the improvements that you're seeing to some of the selecting and some and how things drag and drop uh, are have been really refined if, if you're relatively new to the editor. Like since um you know, since the last big WordPress release or two, like those a lot of efforts have been going into making sure that these sort of interactions are cleaned up quite a bit. And you'll see here I've got this list view. Uh, right now it's not you know particularly useful because I, i'm just throwing a bunch of group blocks in each other but you can close it up if you want um, but i do like to be able to just kind of show like the, i guess the, how, how deep we're going here with the group blocks now let's make this one here wider do i want to do that um, yeah i will but i'll just go in and change these values here what i'm doing now is making sure that the blocks within these screw blocks are going to stay completely full width and only be affected by the padding. So I'm kind of removing the values of the whips from inside of each group block. This is still a little confusing, but the, the idea it's helpful when you're building out sites, but it can get a little confusing can modify the layouts there. And let's turn off that one. Let's see how we're looking. I think it looks all right. So we're going to save this here. And I'm going to go and view it on the front end. So here we've got the exact same thing. Uh, the only difference is I have the placeholder here for the group block uh, versus what's on the front end. Uh, just and also, this is kind of cool here. I'm going to shrink my window down, and you can start seeing there's like this like cool offset effect. So if I add a couple more, I bet I could come up with an interesting type of art that changes based on device too. It's not just a static image. Um, so I'm going to add a couple more here see what i can get drop that in alternate that color and let's do maybe one or two more and close that up so i can see i get in there and let's see how that is reflected oh yeah so this is getting cool uh, so I, lo I love the idea that it shifts based on your view. It's kind of like, you know, like real art when you, sometimes there's art, a lot of art that you, when you have a different perspective, it completely shifts. And I just think that's a fun way to bring that in the digital world. Um, so just something simple like that is fun. Is that like a, uh, like mobile width or similar to a mobile width? That yeah. So, trying? yeah. So if you're viewing it from a desktop and it was, you know, the live, pixel art, not just a screenshot. This is what you would see. But um, if you're on your phone, this is kind of what you're seeing, which I, I like. I like the intentional kind of almost distortion, almost like something's coming up. We've got triangles now. We've got this kind of st stair-stepped view here, another triangle. And you can almost picture this triangle coming all the way up here. I, I think it's fun. Yeah, it's super cool. All right, so now we're going to shift into some of these style variations. I want to see what happens when I start changing up colors. 
this is a new uh, approach in the Gutenberg plugin right now, but it'll it'll probably land in the next version of WordPress where when you activate uh, the, the new styles uh, area, you can see a, a more full screen view. Now, ideally, you know, if your whole page is, is much longer than just my piece here, um, it makes a little bit more sense as you'll see all the different pieces. But as I'm choosing these, I'm seeing the width changing, I'm seeing the colors changing, the paddings can even change, like the sizes. So it looks like this really cool sense to get a bunch of different views here. Uh, Brian, I think Brian Gardner made this one here, the Sherbert one. Kind of fun. Um, what I'll do also, uh, say say I don't like, uh, prefer any of those. Uh, perhaps I, I like this starting canvas and I would just want to change colors uh, within the global styles interface. You can click on colors here in palette and start modifying these colors. Now I used, as a primary and secondary to alternate all these. So I would change the same values. Now, if I go here, oops. let's say I want to do black. I got really, maybe not all the way black, maybe a little bit of hint of blue. And then for secondary, I'll do like a, a grayer with a little hint of blue as well. And then what I did here is change the color palette across the whole site so anywhere that those colors the primary secondary colors were used those will be these changes would be reflected so if i had buttons that were styled with that on the site with those styles would also be reflected there and uh which is a cool way to just quickly change your the look of your site or the vibe of your site um, especially with the accent color type situation if you didn't really if green wasn't your thing you could change those two to, to different shades of blue or whatnot for the 2023 theme. That's a now, question I, I hear yeah. uh, when it comes to like the palettes and or at all because mm -hmm. it uses the word theme. Um, does this affect your site's theme when you're you're editing it where, where you were showing it? Yeah. So the theme, uh, the theme collection here is anything that is um, added by the theme out of the box. So the 2023 includes these five colors, but I went ahead and changed these two. And um, so, so these theme colors are just reflecting of what's available in the theme. Now you can have custom colors as well. Like if I go through and set like a, like a purple, like a deeper purple and name it like accent. And then now this color is also available anywhere else um, in, in the, in the uh, any of the, the design tools so I could use this blue that, or this purplish blue that I just added. So it's just like a, a collection of colors and and within the themes theme.json file you can turn off like even these default colors if you don't want any of these to show. And you can even set specific colors to show up for specific blocks. Like say your your button blocks might have uh, you know this this color blue here and and the white uh, or black but nothing else. Like maybe this blue is reserved only for buttons. You can kind of tailor that experience. Uh, but yeah, these are just kind of collections here. I'm gonna put this back to that. Save that and see that. Okay, we're getting there. I think that's interesting. I wanna kind of go a little bit further, I think playing with gradients now. So if your theme supports gradients, which um, most do out of the box for block themes here, we've got this gradient tab here uh, within the background and we can select one, let's pick. I like this reddish one. Now we're going to go through and we get this really cool effect when we reuse the same gradient across the board. Now, right now, it's a little bit cumbersome to add gradients to every single one of these. Uh, in, in future versions of, of the editor, uh, you should be able to copy and paste styles. So like, I should be able to copy this style, uh, which includes the gradient, any colors or typography or paddings even probably. And, uh, and paste them across all of these. So this will improve. It's not every day you'll, you'll be applying gradients to, to 20 group blocks within each other. But uh, let me paste all these in, or get all these in here. And see, we're already seeing this like cool staggered effect because the gradient's resetting with the hard line, but then it gets much softer along the middle. Uh, I really like, like how this is coming. Let's keep going. Yeah, that's cool. It's, uh, you couldn't really see that at first, and as you're getting closer to the center, yeah. you're seeing really subtle line. Yeah, exactly. 
That's cool. All right. All right, that's all of them. And now let's see what that looks like. Now these gradients, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. And then I'll shift it to mobile. Yeah, it's getting that same same cool effect. Um, I like where this is going. Now these gradients that we're showing here, again, it's under default. So these are the gradients provided by Core WordPress out of the box. Um, your theme can turn these off uh, and your theme can provide its own set of gradients as well. And you would see, just like this says theme and it has the colors provided by 2023, you would see a section of theme and gradients under here uh, that your theme would uh, provide. So out of the box, you can basically design, you come up with a design system of colors and gradients, like the spacing here, uh, font sizes, and the the editor is meant to uh, encourage you know that design system by having presets like these gradient presets and padding presets. But you can still flex it out uh, if you need to to dive in a little bit further. All right, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do the same thing. Um, actually, let's go to styles and see if any other. And none of these are switching up the gradients, are they? Yeah. That's not a big deal because we'll do it ourselves. So I'm going to go to the colors again in Global Styles, but this time instead of editing those values, I'm going to edit these gradients. So these gradients are the ones provided by Core. We use this blush one here, and I think we could do really like uh, more like a grayscale type thing. So we'll change these here. This is already looking cool. That's fun. And again, like this is changing anywhere on the site that I would have this gradient applied. It would change not just on the blocks that I have here, but anywhere throughout the site. But then, so that's how you change those. But I'm also going to drop in some more uh, color stops here. Maybe it's to like a, a purplish. It's kind of fun. And then we'll do another one down here. Uh, maybe this one will be more purple, and then we'll make that one less. Oh, it's kind of fun to like sit here and play with what you think could work. Maybe this is a little bit too bright. Yeah, I like something like this. And I like how this color in the middle, we might give it a tiny bit of purple. But I like how it's almost like a green, like the perception is almost there. And it kind of highlights that line, the idea that there's like balance. And I like how this is growing to lighter and this is going to darker. I think that's really interesting. All right, so let's save that here. And let's do it on the front end. And there we go. And then it gets, it gets kind of trippy here because now it looks almost 3D, which each one of these are kind of lining up. But I do like, I do like how that looks. You can then go in. This might be the last step, but you know, changing the angle here, so you can rotate this around. Do something interesting, or you can type in a number if you know the integer what you're looking for, like one thirty five maybe, or let's go back the other way. Yeah, that looks cool. There we go. And the cool thing with block themes and and this you know, all this new stuff that's coming to WordPress is that, you know, I'm, I keep switching to the front end to show the front end, but the reality is like, these are getting so close. It's almost uh, imperceptible how, how alike they are. And there's a, uh, like, it, it's just really phenomenal that, you know, a couple of years ago, theme authors had to write a bunch of styling just to get this to look remotely close. But now the, the, you know, 2023 actually has no custom CSS in it. I um, mean, it's, and it's, pretty impressive what you can get out of the box without um, complicating things. But yeah, so that's uh, that's how I built uh, what I'm calling balance. That's very cool. Yeah, I agree with you. It's like we've come so far and to think that only just a few years ago, we couldn't do anything like creative like this. So like you can just mess around and and then see it on the front, uh, like reflected on both in both the editor and the in the front end, it's it's amazing. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for for sharing that with us. It's really cool. Um, do we have any questions, um, or is there anything that you um, folks and in, in the attendees um, 
uh, anything you'd like to see more detail on or something you'd like to see again. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> we had a comment that it looks like the uh, the Giza pyramid on the top view. Oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, I can see like if you change the colors to be like sand color or something, that it would totally look like a pyramid. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it really is just fun just to kind of play around and see oh, this is cool like what you can get yeah. just by by using some of these like presets combined with let's go more purple here oh, just creativity it's fun and and again like this was my challenge to like use one kind of block in the most simple way to get mm -hmm. some sort of artistic expression yeah that's great <laughs> Um, when you were showing like the kind of mobile width view, it made me think like these could easily be like um, mobile device uh, wallpapers or some people call them screensavers. Um, and that's a, yeah. a cool way to make it happen. So much easier. Yeah. So, I, I'm a old school graphic designer. So it's so much easier in the block editor than it is in like, say, Illustrator. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, had to use, uh, I was using Photoshop uh, just just a, I think I was trying to open up some old file the other day and it was, I was like, oh man, this is, <laughs> I'm not used to this anymore. I think with, you know, with most things, especially design tools, there are, there are, there is a level of, of learning and, uh, and the block editor is no different. You know, trying to, to learn how some of the nuances of the editor work and uh, there's still a lot to iron out, but overall uh, it really is moving in the right direction uh, quickly. Like the pace of innovation is, is faster than ever, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. And just this year alone, I would 100% you know, lean on that. Cool. Yeah. Well, looks like we have a pretty quiet chat going on right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as uh, you had mentioned, Rich, to me earlier, that like this is super simple yet uh to to accomplish yet um like when you're looking at it and well as i was looking at it before i was just kind of staring it's like how is this done <laughs> and and you're like it's just one block <laughs> i was like that's that's amazing and then yeah you're just using the tools within the editor to to make something um really complex looking um and mm -hmm. yeah, that's really like the point of um, these demos that we're doing, just like showing the, the power um, in just like these simple, uh, simple tools. So anyone can create a, um, a piece of art like this. Um, so yeah, thank you, Rich. Yeah, yeah, I'll hand the share back over to you. <laughs> yeah, um, and maybe we'll be seeing this soon in the, uh, the museum. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, now I'm not sure if I like the one I just created or the the original one better. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see which really one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll share my CV again, and we'll go. We'll actually go through that process uh, so folks can see how that goes. Um, here we go. Well, I won't go completely through the process because I don't have a piece of art to submit, <laughs> but. Um, Oh, yeah. So as we said, one block was used to make the group block. Um, sometimes uh, we'll have a list of, of blocks here, but it is as simple as just the, the group block. Um, and we went through any questions, which there didn't seem to be any um, or any discussion. I'm just double checking one more time. Um, oh, we do have a question from Brian. Um, he is asking you, Rich, uh, what is your favorite new feature in WordPress? Um, in parentheses, he says core of Gutenberg. Hmm. Um, I would say the some of the new stuff coming into the next version of WordPress that's in the Gutenberg plugin now I really uh, improved the user experience, especially around styling you know, like when I when I showed how you zoomed out whenever you go to blocks or to uh, theme styles now you can really see the effect of those changes like something like that I think is really cool and some of the pattern inserter changes so instead of opening up to a, a wall of patterns that may or may not be relevant uh, you open up to the category system with an additional flyout 
where you can list out all, all the different patterns based on what category you selected. So it's much more user-friendly in, in building out sites. I think the, the progression of design tools was a huge focus this year, and there's you know, still a lot more to do on that front. But now it's like, how do we refine what's there and improve the editing experience, uh, not just for writing, which is very important, but also for page creation, like making rich uh, pages and beautiful layouts like out of the box. And anything that leads in that direction is my favorite. But but those two things in particular, I would I can't wait for those to land in WordPress core. Cool. And what uh, what are you excited about in in the future in terms of like what's coming up? Yeah, I think that um, you know style variations were a big hit. I think that once more folks lean in on that, now that 2023 really showcases what's possible, uh, we I think we'll see a lot more of those within uh, all the different block themes that are already out there, but also uh, unlocking the creativity of folks who uh, couldn't necessarily or didn't have all the skills to put together you know, PHP based themes. Um, and now we're kind of unlocking that. So I'm excited to see a lot more creativity um, through all the effort that's been going into making those systems for themes easier to, to design. It's really, it's really more about designing now than building, uh, which I think is great because um, they're, you know, design tools. It's your theme is how things look. Um, so I think that's uh, uh, something that I think, I hope we see a, a big wave of creative expression and we, or I think we're already seeing some of it. So I, I think just in time, we'll see a lot more. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, hence these uh, these pieces of art in the Block Museum. Um, yeah, we're seeing this influx of creativity since, um, yeah, all of this. these tools are available to designers and artists. Um, so again, I wanted to just quickly go through um, how you can contribute to your own piece of art to the Museum of Block Art. It's very simple. You just go to the Block Museum at block-museum.com um, and click here on the contribute link. And there are some guidelines here um, for contributing to the museum. So, you know, review those um, and you can submit um, your piece of art down here with this form is pretty simple and yeah rich here is on the review crew for <laughs> for the museum so um it is likely he will see your piece of art um that's right yeah so anyone can contribute just like any almost everything in wordpress really is you can you can contribute because this is this is your community um so that's pretty simple um since we do have a little bit of time, I, I think maybe going through this interactive walkthrough a little bit would be fun um, because yeah, a lot of us in the community are really excited about this. It's uh, another creative way of exploring uh, the museum. Um, so again, like it is a similar to like a choose your own adventure, click through adventure kind of kind of almost game in a way. So um, yeah, as they say here, the tour allows you to, to choose how you experience the art pieces that have been curated here for you. So um, you simply just go through and click, um, step into the main exhibit here, and it just unfolds as you go through and tells the story of like, you enter a large room with art carefully covering the walls around you. Large windows break up the scene and open up to the city below, allowing for soft light to fall onto each piece of art. Um, that's very evocative for me. It's been, been a while since I've been to a museum in person since like the pandemic and everything, but um, yeah, that's reminds me of those experiences. Um, so here you can, again, choose your own adventure. You can read the curator statement here. Um, and Carthy uh, wrote that there. And yeah, then you can step in and view the first piece of art and it just unfolds again. Um, you have this um, this ballerina art that was created with blocks, um, and you can click through to find out how the art was made. Um, so this takes you to the. Oh, it didn't open in a new window, but I think it unfolds. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I just have a habit of opening things in new tabs. Um, so yeah, it gives you the details. The um, so. 
um, fellow artist, uh, Ana Segura, made it, uh, made this piece of art with the ballerina. And when you clicked to see how it was made, this is your behind the scenes look. Um, and you get to see the code here. Um, you can download the image if it's something you like. Um, so you can take this and put it in your own site. Um, so yeah, I can copy paste and you can have that piece of art in your own site. So that's pretty cool. Um, I see that Brian has shared his favorite piece of art in chat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open that. Uh, this is this is a fun one. So it's called It's Me, but I think this is pretty recognizable <laughs> um, of, of who this is. Um, so yeah, and again, this is the uh, individual page for a piece of art. Like you can get to it uh, from the index of of the museum. Uh, and yeah, this is this is really cool. It's just made off made with blocks again. And I think that pixel art is kind of a fun, in general, is a fun thing to do with blocks. Um, and in one of our previous workshops, um, yeah, you know, Brian kind of deconstructed this. So. Check it, check it out on wordpress.tv. Uh, it was kind of a fun, fun little exercise. Um, yeah, and again, back to this interactive exhibit. Um, you can just continue through the museum this way. Um, sorry if I'm going a little fast there. First piece of art. And then, yeah, you can go to the next piece of art and it just continues. I like this one. It's got a little bit of movement in there. And this one was made with just two blocks, cover block and image block. And yeah, it's just something I could just stare at for a while. Continue on. Yeah, so you could get really lost in this. Um, here's uh, one of Brian's. <laughs> like I said, you could get really lost in this and I could just do this for, <laughs> for like an entire hour. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start wrapping up here. Um, if folks have any questions or anything you'd like to add to the conversation, um, I'm, our chat is open. Um, and I would like to add that we have um, a survey that we would love for you all to fill out. Um, so this is what we call the individual learner survey, which is where we're trying to um, determine ways to improve the resources that we provide to the WordPress community on Learn WordPress. So that's learn.wordpress.org. Um, we want to figure out how the community prefers to learn. Do you like workshops like these? Do you like doing tutorials? Do you not like video at all? Do you like text-based uh, learning? Um, so um, based on this survey, you know, we were going to set some goals for the upcoming years for how we would like to provide um, uh, educational materials to you all. So your, your input there is really important uh, and valued. So thank you if you're able to just take a few minutes and fill out that survey. Looks like we uh, we're still a little quiet in the chat. So um, yeah, so I'm going to wrap up here and thank you all for learning with us today um, and being a part of our community. Um, again, as I mentioned before, we have more online workshops um, and some video tutorials at learn.wordpress.org. Um, also, what I haven't mentioned before is that. Um, over at learn.wordpress.org, we have materials for educators as well. So we have like lesson plans for um, for folks to you know teach their own communities um, about certain certain things in WordPress. So um, it's it's really broad. There's all sorts of learning resources there for you, all related to WordPress. Um, and if you'd like to connect with more WordPress contributors like myself and like Rich, uh, we have a chat instance in Slack at chat.wordpress.org and you can join there. Um, 
And then finally, um, we have the recordings of these workshops posted on wordpress.tv. So uh, this and other workshops are posted at this link that I've shared in the chat. Um, and yeah, you'll find this in previous online workshops and tutorials posted there as well. Um, that is it for me, <laughs> unless anyone else has anything else to add. Um, I wanted to thank Rich again for being here with us today and demoing his, his artwork. Um, and we hope to see you at the next one. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And thank you, Brian, for being here too. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm.